And so I'm going to start out with the corn staging um, here. And um, the first thing that I'm going to, to, to show you um, is, is some resources, right? So Angie uh, pointed out resources. Um, these are all um, some, some really good ones um, that help us with corn staging and, and corn growth and development. Um, I'm only going to spend a little bit of time on, on the staging, and I'm really not going to get into the growth and development uh, and some of the key things that, that we want to talk about at that time frame. So um, that's why I wanted to point these out. Um, and I'll put this screen or this slide back up at the end, too. So if you don't have uh, an ability to get this screenshot here uh, before I move on, you'll be able to capture it at the end again. And then it'll be available with some of Warren's uh, information as well. I, I put two of them in uh, bold text there. Um, so the, the corn growth and development, uh, corn staging and key growth stages. So uh, the publication number is crop 3094A and B. I, I highlighted those because uh, generally I don't um, um, send out my PowerPoint slide deck here, um, largely because these two publications were developed um, as a handout for this presentation. So um, they have a lot of that uh, information already in it. And then the other one that has some good staging information in it is the corn and soybean field guide um, there at the very top. Um, and that's a really handy reference uh, to take out to the field with you. So I, I just wanted to point those out before I moved on too far. So as we think about corn staging and the developmental staging, um, I, I typically try to point out that what we really are dealing with is uh, the reproductive and the the um, vegetative um, stages, right? So um, in corn, um, this is pretty key because um, they, they basically run um, sequentially. It's a very um, defined process. Um, and there's multiple ways that you can estimate this out. Um, we, in, in various publications we have available, and I'm, I'm not gonna show them here because it will, we go through it way too quickly, but we can estimate out based on basically heat units. Um, and some people have simplified it to saying every three days, every four days, every five days, you'll have a new leaf stage depending on um, the, the time of year that you're in. So I, I did wanna point out though, that what we're really talking about with development, developmental staging is that it, with corn, we're starting with VE and then we go to V1, V2, V3 um, until we get out to the, the last vegetative stage, which is uh, tasseling, and then we jump right into the reproductive staging. Um, so silking, blister, milk, uh, dough, dent, and then maturity. And so I'll talk about some of the keys that we're looking for as we move through with that. Um, so there are a couple different methodologies um, that I want to point out um, because as, as a crop scout, you will run into these different um, methods and, and different ways of characterizing where the crop is at. So the leaf collar method is the most common method that we use in research and um, a lot of my publications and others um, that are, are working for land grant universities are using this leaf collar method. Okay, and so that's what I'm gonna show you here in a little bit. Um, the other methods are the horizontal or droopy leaf method and then crop height, okay? And so the horizontal droopy leaf method, um, the insurance industry does use um, so that's where you might uh, hear about that. And then um, the herbicide labels or um, really any pesticide label often talks about leaf stage. And sometimes they're using the leaf collar method. Sometimes they use the horizontal droopy leaf method. And sometimes they just use crop height. And occasionally you'll find uh, multiple of these on the same label. Okay, so recognize when you're looking at those pesticide labels in particular, recognize what type of methodology they're using because you're going to have to adjust what you're looking for in the field, okay? So we do have uh, this table off on, on the right um, side of the slide that we can um, use to try to transfer, you know, from one method to another method. Um, and so that's um, how we, or that, that's our best ability to do that. And it's based on some um, research that was done where they basically collected um, all, all of these um, at the same time frame. Um, and this was collected on some hybrids just from, oh, it's probably been uh, about 10 years now that this uh, chart was put together. So it's fairly current, fairly accurate still, as far as being able to, to go from one method to another. 
although there can be some, some differences based on hybrids um, and geographic locations. So, so be aware of that. So I'm gonna um, go into and talk about the leaf collar method here um, in much more detail and, and start um, helping us understand how we do that staging um, and, and how it looks when we're in the field. So the leaf collar method um, requires us to really think about and, and be able to identify um, some plant parts, right? So um, you have the, the main stalk and then you have the, the basically the leaf sheath that is wrapping around that main stalk. And so you can see that on the bottom of the plants and on the right hand plant it's uh, been pulled away just a little bit to help distinguish it from the stalk. So that leaf sheath is actually connected to a node on the stalk, okay? Um, and then the, the next part of um, where we're going with that is looking at the juncture between the leaf sheath and then that leaf blade, okay? And that, that juncture is uh, where the leaf collar is at. And so on the, the right picture, you can really see that from the inside um, uh, angle or inside view. On the left picture, you can see that there is some um, slight discoloring. So it's not the, the, the same uh, leaf color as the blade or the, the sheath. Okay, so that, that is a good way of distinguishing it. So um, identifying that leaf color um, is how we are um, identifying which leaf stages um, we are at. And so I wanted to, to, to spend just a little bit of time of really pointing that out, um, allowing people to kind of see what that looks like, okay? So then um, the, the next part about that is um, when we're doing this vegetative staging, we're really counting um, the leaves where we have a visible leaf collar, okay? And so sometimes um, as they're wrapped up in the whorl or wrapped around the stalk, those, that collar is um, wrapped around and is not fully visible. So we wanna wait for the edge of that leaf collar um, to just be separated before we would consider that leaf collar um, as fully visible, okay? So um, we don't wanna count the leaves in the whorl. And so um, in this picture here, um, what we have is we have the first leaf, um, it's got more of a rounded tip uh, to it. And then we have what I would um, term as the second leaf, um, it's got a pointed tip. But as, as you look down at that juncture, where we have the, the leaf blade and the leaf sheath, that collar there is, um, is separated out. And, and then this third leaf, um, that is still uh, tied up in the whorl of the plant. And then you can even see the tip of the fourth leaf there. But this would be a, a second leaf stage plant or a V2 plant, okay? So that's um, how we would look at and, and try to start to consider um, when, when are those um, leaf collars visible? Uh, when do we count that leaf um, for the, the appropriate leaf stage? Okay, so um, actually I'm gonna go back a slide here, um, a second. So um, as we look at and we, we think about the leaf staging um, aspects of this, um, we're really looking at um, that first leaf um, being our V1 stage, right? So I, I did kind of mention that, um, but what we end up going from is a vegetative um, staging um, or an emergent stage. And that's gonna be just um, when that leaf um, or the, the shoot first emerges out of the ground. And so it's really uh, gonna be essentially a green dot when it comes out of the ground. And we can consider that then at the uh, VE stage or the emerge stage. Um, the, set, the, the first stage, leaf stage, the V1 stage, is when this um, first leaf here has that, that first collar visible. And then, um, like I said earlier, this is a V2 plant because the second leaf um, has a, a visible collar. And okay, so um, a, a little bit of a distinguishing um, as how do we go from V1 to V2 to V3, and then that continues on um, as we go through things, okay? So um, I'm gonna pull up the first polling uh, poll question here. Um, and this one's gonna be a little bit harder um, to see, but I'm gonna point out one thing here. So there, there is a leaf down here at the bottom of the page. 
um, or out at the bottom of the picture. So what stage uh, is this plant here at? So um, th this one here would be a uh, V3 plant. And so your first leaf is down here at the bottom and it doesn't, it isn't a great picture from the standpoint that you can't see that first true leaf, but that's the first true leaf. Your second leaf is kind of off on the back side. And then our third leaf um, is right here on the front side. You can see that collar is pulled away from the whorl um, and pulled out. And then you do have your fourth and fifth uh, leaves that are still tied up there in the whorl. So this is a, a, um, a good example of a, uh, a V3 plant um, in, as far as the, the staging would be concerned. So when we get out to the mid to late vegetative stages, um, this can be a little bit more difficult um, to, to get some accurate um, staging on. And, you know, in, in a lot of cases, um, we can do some, some guessing um, to some degree. Um, but if we do need to, to really have an accurate staging, the best way to do that is to identify the stalk nodes and their corresponding leaves. And we can do this um, pretty easily by splitting uh, the stalk with a, a hawkbill knife, um, like Angie had talked about. Um, or the other way, which is a little less precise, um, is we can estimate the, the staging based on the nodes uh, and where they're at from the soil surface. So a lot of times we assume um, that the sixth leaf node is at the soil surface. And so then you can count nodes um, up from the soil surface and then start attaching those out um, by the connecting leaf sheath up to the, the leaf collars as far as being able to, to do some further staging on that. So there, there's these two methods that are really um, fairly accurate. Um, again, um, your accuracy with the estimating from the this, this sixth node being at the, the soil surface, um, you could be plus or minus um, a leaf stage or a vegetative stage at that time frame doing it that method. Um, splitting the stalk is going to be much more accurate, um, but is a little bit more time consuming. Um, Angie mentioned um, some, um, some frost damage. Um, that's going to be a situation where you have to account for the leaves that got frosted off. Um, and so um, in some cases, the, that is a, a good option here, um, especially when we're looking at herbicides um, out at the V678 um, timeframes and, and, and trying to avoid some um, toxicity issues. Um, we may want to, to dig and split um, those stocks to be able to account for that a little bit. And, th and that can be difficult um, even at that stage just because the, the characteristics are not as well defined. And so when you split that stock, um, what you find is that, um, especially once you get out um, into the mid to late vegetative stages, nodes one through four um, compress down at the bottom. Node five is um, slightly above that. You can see, you know, maybe an eighth to a quarter of an inch of internodal space um, between four and five. And then between five and six, um, now you're looking at um, maybe something closer to um, a quarter to a half an inch of internodal space there. And then again, node six is usually what we consider to be um, the node at the soil surface uh, when we're estimating. And then node seven um, usually is um, somewhat um, compressed compared to um, where you would start normally thinking of the, the normal internodal space um, as you go up the plant uh, further, um, just because of that elongation process um, with, with plant growth. So again, when you split that stalk, um, then you can start to see these nodes um, as they discolor. Each node is associated with um, a leaf sheath, and then you can follow that leaf sheath up to the leaf collar. So that's um, a, a quick way of getting into um, and, and understanding what those um, vegetative stages are when, as you go from um, the mid into the late uh, vegetative time frame. Our, our last um, stage as far as um, corn development is concerned on the vegetative side is tasseling. Um, we get to this stage um, when the last tassel branch is fully visible, okay? So uh, th there is at times when people see that the main tassel is out, uh, main tassel may be shedding pollen, uh, but we're technically not at the 
the VT or the tasseling stage until the last branch, tassel branch, is uh, fully visible. So the picture in the right, most of those plants um, that we're seeing are not at the VT stage. It would be at the V17, V18, V19 um, growth stage, okay? So that's a, a key distinguishing feature um, to be looking for when we, when we get to the tasseling stage. So then as we transition from tasseling and, and vegetative staging into the reproductive staging, what we're really looking for is the presence of silks as they come out of um, the husk. Um, and so really, as soon as we get one, one silk um, emerging through the husk, um, that's when we're at the R1 or the silking stage of it. So that's um, a key thing to, to note there. Each ovule or potential kernel ha is associated with a silk, and so that's um, a, a key time frame to be considering and to be thinking about here. Um, so my second polling question, um, and I'll um, let you answer this one as, as I go on uh, through the um, the, reproduct the other reproductive stages, and then I'll I'll come back around and talk about this one. Um, can we have silking occur? before tasseling. So can we enter into the R1 silking stage before we have um, tasseling occurring? Okay, and so that's just a, a yes or no poll question there. Um, so I'll, I'll continue to move on while you answer that one, and then I'll um, respond back to that one here um, as, I, as I continue on um, with, with the reproductive side of this. So the reproductive stages um, are, a little bit more subjective um, in the staging process. So it's really after we get to the, you know, R1 stage in the presence of silks, we're really looking at the kernels. We're looking at in, in identifying the consistency of the um, interior of the interior of, of the kernels or the exterior of the kernels, right? So the R2 stage is the blister stage. Okay, so the, the blister stage, you're going to have a very um, uh, plump kernel um, that's absorbing and pulling in water very, very rapidly. So when you puncture that kernel, um, it's going to squirt out a clear uh, liquid, okay? And, and a lot of times it will, um, so to speak, have, have a fair amount of pressure when you, you, when you squeeze it, it will, and it punctures, it will really squirt out um, and... Uh, so that's a, a good way of distinguishing that R2 um, blister stage. Um, the R3 stage is the milk stage. So again, that kernel, you, when you puncture it, it's going to squirt out a milky fluid. Um, so it's going to be more the consistency of, um, you know, on the early side, it's going to be more like skim milk. And by the time you get out to the end of it, it's going to be more like uh, the whole milk, um, uh, maybe even a, a, a creamer type consistency. Okay, so um, the, that's the, the milk stage. Then when you get to the uh, dough stage, R4, um, this is when, when you puncture that kernel, um, you're not really going to get uh, much fluid that actually squirts out of it. Um, you're going to have more of a doughy, starchy uh, consistency, uh, pasty consist consistency of that inter interior of the, the kernel there. Okay. So the, from R1 out to R4, that's going to occur over about a uh, 36, or excuse me, a 30-day uh, period. Um, that varies a little bit depending on the maturity, uh, varies depending on the uh, high temperatures, low temperatures um, that we're experiencing at, the, at that time frame. The R5 stage, which is the dense stage, um, is distinguished when we have a dent on the outside of those kernels. And so um, it, these pictures really don't show the dent uh, very well, but on the outside of that, as, as the moisture is decreasing in that kernel, the kernel and the pericarp kind of shrink in um, predominantly out there on the uh, edge of that or into that kernel first. Okay, so that dent stage um, is gonna be about another 30 days, okay? Um, in that time frame, we're filling that kernel with um, starches and we're decreasing the moisture from it. And then the final um, reproductive stage is the R6 stage or the when we've reached physiological maturity. 
Okay, so we'll reach physiological maturity. Uh, the kernel will be about um, 30 to 35 percent moisture in that range. And then a few days after reaching physiological maturity, we'll see um, a black layer um, occur on the edge of that kernel. And you can see this just by very um, gently um, splitting those kernels. You can see that black layer, it's an abscission layer, um, which uh, is a, a really good estimate that you've already reached physiological maturity. So um, if I'm gonna see, Warren, have you, or can you close the poll so I can see the responses there? So um, yeah, most of you responded that um, we can reach silking before um, tasseling. And that is exactly um, the correct answer is yes. Um, so while generally speaking, we say that um, corn is um, a, a sequential growth pattern. Um, it's a determinant plant. So you go from vegetative into uh, reproductive uh, staging. Um, that's one instance where we can actually, you know, from a staging perspective, we can skip the VT stage because a lot of times, um, and plant breeders have done this to, to improve pollination, um, they've worked on closing the um, silking and thesis interval. So what's re what we're really seeing in a lot of hybrids today is that we have silks out at the same time or slightly before um, we we really have pollen shed in that in that tassel uh, visible. So. Um, the, the correct answer is yes, we can, we can reach silking before we get to, um, to VT. Okay, um, and so I'm gonna skip that poll question and cause I'm up, I'm up to my time limit here um, as far as covering some of this material um, related to corn staging. But um, I guess what I'm gonna do here is, again, pop up the screen on some of these resources to um, further help with corn staging, but also to further, um, and then um, now we're at a time frame, and I'm gonna unshare my screen so you can uh, see me again, where if you do have some questions, um, I'm more than willing to um, answer those at this time frame. So, Mark, I've collected three questions, and the first one is, why is it critical to be able to correctly stage corn? So, the main reason on why we really want to be able to correctly stage corn, and I, I think it really comes back to at the front end of the growing season, when we're out there applying products, um, when we're out there, um, you know, whether it's uh, a pesticide um, is probably the biggest case. Um, we want to know what those stages are so we can make sure that we don't have crop injury occurring uh, when we apply um, fungicides, insecticides, herbicides. Um, if we're wanting to um, understand um, the key growth stages, so that's going to be, um, in, in my, in my uh, estimate, one of the first things, key growth stages that we want to identify and know where we're at is going to be the V6 or the sixth leaf stage. And so that's when the growing point is now above the, the soil surface, um, but that's also a key time frame from um, the development and the initiation of the ear and the ovules or, or potential kernels, right? So we can start to think about, okay, so what, what growth stage are we at when key weather um, stressors might come through or when we're applying pesticides, things like that? Okay, <clears throat> the second question is, in reference to vegetative staging, and it is, does the collar have to be pulled away from the stalk to be considered the next stage, or is the next stage when the white line across the stalk is visible? So the the key that I use is that when the margins of the leaf collar, um, so those the leaf collar is going to be wrapped around um, the whirl, right? And so as soon as the edges or the the edges of that leaf collar separate apart is typically what I term as that leaf collar being fully visible, okay? Um, so you will see that discoloration and there can still be overlap of the, the leaf margins or that collar um, edges um, around the, the stalker, around the whorl, right? So as soon as those um, separate out, that's when we would say that it's at that leaf stage or that collar is fully visible. Okay, thanks, Mark. 
And the final question is in reference to the nodes. When you split open the stock, the four nodes stacked at the bottom. And so it is, how do you know that those are the nodes one through four? Or I guess, how do you know that node five starts above that? That's a good question. I'm sure someone did research on that years and years ago. <laughs> years and years ago. Um, that I just always use that. Um, it, it came out of our current growth and development uh, publication, but um, as I tracked it back, um, it was in uh, previous versions of that, and and then I tracked it into some of the the research literature. And so I haven't um, technically done um, you know the research looking into that. Um, it's just always been what it's referenced as is that the the four uh, first four nodes are stacked together at the at the bottom of that. Um, I think you know part of how they they can also look at that is they can look at um, where the um, nodal roots start developing, and especially with um, en entomology when they are looking at um, corn rootworm injury, they're looking at um, the um, basically the nodal roots for feeding. And you can see those roots are actually coming out of those nodes. And so you can, uh, I think initially on what they do is they're, they're trying to count how many sets of nodal roots are coming out um, of that, um, kind of that compressed area.